Yeah, but as we mentioned before, you know, we have also two boxing cards that, uh, you know, that one that aired yesterday and one that aired on Thursday. And I have to say, these two cards, to me, I think I, I think it's a representative of like a shift. I think top rank now is starting to hit in stride a little bit in terms of these cards. Uh, and, and I think yeah, they've been in these stride. Like, they, like first, I think you know they kind of, you know they had issues with fighters falling out and having to reschedule fights and shit like that, and you know some fights you know that had to go away because of injury and stuff like that. But I think, but in my case, but I think these two, these last two cards, I'm thinking to myself, like they were consistently like from top to bottom, they were consistent. They had some good fights, and then the main events, them, well, one of the main events from the first guy we're talking about. Um, Jose Pedraza versus Mikel Lespierre. That one was one of the first rescheduled fights because of something stupid that uh, Lespierre's manager did. You know, he, you know, he really uh, fucking stupid. Yeah, you know. No I mean, way, man. Tim Bradley let him have it. <laughs> you know, and 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 I think in in a way, I think this might have now Lespierre would probably have lost, but I think he would have put up a better fight. Because, like I said, when they actually, you know, when he saw him, they, I think, I think the was like 144, some shit like that. And I never, couldn't help but notice that Lesbian looked a little bit fleshy, you know, for uh, being at like 144. Flabby. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you, you have Jose Pedraza. I mean, dude looked like he was, dude looked motivated. Dude looked absolutely ready to go. Um, and uh, before we get into that main event, though, I mean, the, the undercard for it wasn't anything too crazy. I mean, Robesi Ramirez, he got his revenge. I know me and LB was talking about that fight against Don Gonzalez. Like, you know, we expected him to, like, you know, put him away or at least to knock him down. And he didn't either. <laughs> he, you know? he, he won, but I don't think he looked you know, great. Like, Rob, Rob D. Ramirez was... He, he looked cool. You know, it seemed like he was trying to punch harder. Yeah, that um, performance was mid. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, it was better than the first one, but I felt like if he would have did this the first time, he would already be further ahead. So, it was kind of like, eh, it was, it was a mid-performance. Like, someone tried to sell you, like, some loud, but it was just some real good mid. <laughs> But then, but then you got some second thoughts on it, like, and that was a Rob, Rob Z, Rob Z Ramirez performance, like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like, what did he really show us? I mean, he shows that he could actually, you know, he could actually move his hands when you know he's supposed to, and then on top of that, and, and on top of that too, Ramirez, he was active since that loss. I mean, he scored like three quick knockouts afterwards, and Gonzalez hadn't fought since that upset one. So I figured, like, so, so the, I mean, so I'm thinking, like, if you have a guy who hasn't fought in like seven months or whatever, like, and you don't fall like three times, like, you're gonna be fresh for like, that's what I'm saying. Like, what did he really show? Is he he did what he was supposed to do, but it took him two times to do it. Well, yeah, what he was supposed to do the first time. It's only supposed to be one time. Yeah. Right. Like you know, it's like passing summer school with a D. Like, what were you there for? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, now obviously, because yeah, as we all, as we all, if you've ever listened to us, you know, the Cuban School of Boxing is currently under, it's a, it's under, under probation right now. Under know? major reconstruction. Now, you yeah. know what? It's not even open right now. They're just doing like little tutoring classes every now and then. <laughs> online courses. Online, yeah, yeah, that's even better. <laughs> online courses. They, they ain't let the facility just open up yet. So I mean, we'll, be, we'll, we'll keep an eye on Robesi Ramirez to see, you know, how how things go with him. Uh, but like I said, I mean, positives are at least he's actually he was actually trying to he was punching through his opponent for once, but he just you know he just didn't stop him. You know, I don't think he let his hands go enough. Like it was more it's like he was trying to prove to himself because he was all cocky as hell in that shit. Hell yeah. 
him. So I'm like, ah, like this nigga, he ain't trying to stop him. He just trying to prove a point. Like I'm better than you, type shit. Right. You know, but like I said, you know, we'll watch because you know, top rank. You know, they, I mean, he, they put all that attention and money on him. He's one of their top prospects. You know, so we'll see. You know, if he suffers the Verdejo curse or he, you know, he actually blooms into something significant. Uh, and then, but then also, but the rest of the card though was actually pretty entertaining. Like we had the Nigerian versus Samoan, you know, lightweight uh, Ibe Abuchi versus. Tua. Oh, that was the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. poor man to uh, Ibe Abuchi. Yeah, yeah that you know, I mean, it, 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 like once in a while, it, it's good to see sea level heavyweights, you know, you know, just slug it out for about six rounds or whatever. And, uh, and my goodness, they were slugging it out. <laughs> like you know, it, 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 like I, I couldn't help us. Like you know, this may, they may be sea level heavyweights, but they're moving their hands more than most of the top heavyweights. Yeah, the Nigerian <laughs> man was like exhausted, and he still had the heart to throw those punches, and he was still landing at a good clip. So exactly, you know, I was entertained, and you know, you had to have heart for that fight because he fought recently. So I was entertained. Yeah, and then also too the Dominican cat who scored. The brutal jab knockout. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've, I've never seen a jab knockout like that. I mean, do uh, crack the do crack. It was like I think it was a right jab or whatever. And do went over and under the ropes, holding his eye. I'm just like, I was like, what the hell? Dumb right first person to that jab. Yeah. <laughs> and, and but the guy, you know, he came straight with it, so it's like, damn, like. But the thing though, that jab was mad audible though. Like it was like boom. Like you could hear that shit. And usually that's an authoritative jab. You know, so I'm just like, damn, like and I, I should have fallen up to see whether or not. But the way he was holding his eye, I mean he was like you were thinking that's a crack orbital right there. You know, because he was because he was in so much pain. Like it was it, it, it was ridiculous. You know, but yeah, that shit uh painful. Oh, damn. But it was entertaining, though. But in the end, yeah. Though, but in the end, it was what it was. What it was entertaining, you know. And that's what it's all about: having these cards be entertaining for us to watch. And that jab knockout was entertaining. You know, like I said, it was a it's a fade, and we and we support fades. That's what they do. And well, there are in there are three guarantees in life: death, taxes, and Dominicans that punch. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes. Some of them they have a little issue with the boxing and whatnot. But yes. Uh, some yeah. of them boxing might be struggle or or even worse, the weight management. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Guzman. Guzman home. <laughs> Guzman. You know, but uh yeah, um, yeah. who's looking at like Larry Holmes in the damn next fight. Bruh, yeah, honestly that, that kind of hurt honestly I, I felt sad because every time I look at that dude now it's like he, 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 he's like he, I, I, pity, I feel pity for him and I shouldn't but it's just like it just like that that dude could have been something and he looks like a totally different person now like you don't even look like he ever boxed like. exactly and I remember I read some interview in there I think he was talking about he was like damn near homeless and it was eating McDonald's and like he had a picture to McDonald's and shit like that. yeah he he fumbled the bag crazy like he has nobody to blame but himself yeah he still I, mean, I, feel, I, feel, I feel bad I feel bad I'm, I'm a, I feel bad but like he didn't just straight up fumble the bag he fucking dropped the bag off a damn cliff yeah it's like it's like, it's like it's, I mean, it, now I mean I was enlightened by someone who actually had been around uh, you know I've been around Guzman Guzman does have some demons has some real demons that are not really publicized not just it, it goes more than just the eating that he, he does stuff like that, but um, but yeah, it's just like you, like you, like I think dude really needs some help because I mean he give me he do looks like he weighs more than me and he's like five six. You know what I'm <laughs> Damn. You know what I'm saying? But I mean at least he's in a trainer's role. I mean because you know, say what you want about I mean Gooseman, yes you know personal discipline side. I mean Gooseman probably obviously does have a lot to offer in terms of actual boxing stuff because dude had it, he had it just didn't have discipline or, you know yeah. to maintain though so I mean yeah it, w- it was sad seeing him that way um, 
But I think the only dud of the night was that Albert Bell fight. You know, LB had some comments about that dude. I mean, oh, you that know, boring ass fight. I'm good. Yeah, that shit put me to sleep. I mean, you uh, know, you know what's fucked up. Him, uh, Robert, Robert Jr. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I said he like looks like he, he's built like Robert Easter. Even fucking throws like that one two like him too, like, but like a Robert Easter that moves around more. So I'm like, and that lacks the power. Yeah, that too. I mean, you know, what Robert fucking... Easter could crack and hurt you when he when he actually tries to. I mean, you know, you fucked up with even <laughs> Ward was talking about this nigga moves too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when I heard that, I was like, "Damn!" Like, yeah, it's a wrap. This guy, he he, he passed the blood test. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, the only interesting thing about that fight was Bell broke his hand <laughs> in the fight, and was and like they couldn't hide it. Like, you know, dude turned away and everything. You know, but um, other than that, it was just, it, it, you know, it kind of killed the vibe of the night a little bit. So. It was it was great to see the main event be more action packed. Yeah, and like you know, high pace and like, you know, Pedraza was looking like, like he was trying to look like he was elite. Yeah, like you know, Pedraza had that loss to Zapata, and you know, he was at because they were trying to build it as like a crossroads fight, and he fought like it too. Like, dude, let off like that killer instinct combo. Like, he teed up. He must have connected on like twenty fucking punches on that dude on the rope. He was like boom, boom, boom. Like he played it. Like heavy back combinations, like one, two, yeah, one, yeah. one. No lie, he was he was putting hands on um, Les Pierre. Yeah, yeah. damn near hands in. God damn. Right. Yeah, there was a whole nothing. I'm like shit. Like, and he was darting in and, in and out using the footwork. Always had a hand on him. It was, yeah. I mean, I thought Pedraza looked good. He was yeah. impressive, but I felt like. He really needed a knockout for that type of fight. Like he for the and he could have gotten he could have gotten it, but he let him he let him off the hook. Yeah, yeah. Like he needed more body punching, and I felt like there was times where he could have really stepped on the gas a little bit more. Yeah, like I like I mean, like I think the the high point of the fight was the fifth one because because first it was you know I was thinking because I was saying like man, man let's Peter needs to throw something because he's getting like he just absorbed a killer instant combo. Like I, I swear I heard. Ultra in yeah. my head, my nigga was landing. <laughs> he took uh, that proton cannon from uh, Iron Man. <laughs> that shit rattled off like 17 <laughs> points. Right? <laughs> but then let's Pierre though. Like I'm saying, he needs to do this. And then all of a sudden, he drops him with the body shot. I'm like, okay, okay then. And then after that, um, um, Pedraza returned the knock. I was like, okay, this is the shit right here. So I'm like, damn, they just give it up the round. But then also something else stupid that came up and I'm hoping that this does not become a thing. Like I think um, they stopped the action in the middle of the fight to review this. Like I don't think instant replay should ever work like this in boxing. You still, I mean, you, you, if you want to put it when at least it's in, like there in the corner. Yeah, that was, I know, yeah, that was fucking stupid. Yeah, like, I mean, like dog, like, I mean, you just gave the fight extra time to recover and rest. And then lo and behold, Robert Bird that name comes up again because Robert Bird decided that you know the, the knockdown that uh, Les Beard wore wasn't a knockdown. Um, he was fucking what? Yeah, it was. I mean, Pietraza was going down by the from the punch. The foot just happened to be in the way. The foot did not cause him to fall. He was going down. And but the, Bird, yeah, and, and, like, see, it was like more to the and, side. And y'all was. And y'all was giving fucking Robert Bird passes the last time when I said how terrible of a ref he's been. No, he's terrible. No, I, not me. I, 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 I don't I, think I, we gave him passes. We were saying he's old and he's getting bad. Like, but he's still better. Like, he does a better job than his wife does uh, judging. <laughs> I mean, the barometer isn't high for that gauge. <laughs> but remember, at least Robert Bird was average at one point like when has Adelaide Bird been average or even good at her job <laughs> yeah, there boy. you go like we weren't giving niggas passes cause he is old bro like he shouldn't be reffing no more yeah, yeah this is awful man it's, it's, you know yeah I mean like, honestly like I mean Les Pierre deserved to have that knockdown and the fact that he actually said you know they actually said that wasn't they actually said that wasn't a knockout i was like this is some bullshit and i just hope that the replay in the vegas like they, they need to they need to fix that like 
like they can announce it during the fight or you know as they're fighting but yeah don't stop the fight yeah just so they can do it instantly but that's bullshit we don't do that because it because it, it, it could have up the flow of the fight and, but luckily it didn't but one thing that i got from it was like, les pierre is tough i mean that's a tough dude like he took it like, yeah, he's, dur- he's durable very good. Yeah, and Ward wouldn't let us stop knowing. Uh, wouldn't let us. Wouldn't let us forget about that little timeout. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, about it for like four rounds. Like, like okay, like we get it, bro. Shit. Yeah, like, I mean, was was disturbed. Bro. Like, I mean, you, I mean, you rarely see this dude animated, uh, animated like that. And dude was just like on, on, like yo, Ward, talk about something else in the fight, bro. Yeah, like he was getting annoying with that shit. Like, bro, we get it. Like, the fight I mean, he's kind of low key been more and more animated the last couple of like broadcasts. I mean, yeah. if I, if I, I mean, I'm thinking that maybe he found the same, uh, the same uh, alcohol that Timmy found. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, you you mean um um Eddie Murphy Jr. This nigga with that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, like, like nigga, chill, like. But, I mean, Bradley's naturally turned up. He's kind, I, I'm kind of yeah. used to it. So it's like, yeah, I, mean, I like Bradley's commentating. I like I like Ward's commentating too, but just sometimes like Ward, like he harps on certain shit, and I feel like it's just unnecessary. Well, he he harps on. I've noticed that he harps on shit that are pet peeves of him when he was a fighter. Certain things that he didn't like when he was a fighter. Now he it's like he noticed. Sound like he still want to fight. I'm gonna just tell you the truth. Like exactly the fire he be sounding. Like the last couple of weeks, like I think he wants to fight. Like Bradley, I think like, he's good. If, if Bradley really wanted to fight, he would have came out for Broner or somebody. Yeah, well, well, he can't. Well, Ward can't fight. He's up. He's, he's in that Lloyd's of London shit. So he's done. He, he can't yeah. fight if he wants. Yeah, because Lloyd's of London is what the wrestlers used to have back in the day when they got the injuries, and then they go out and get all these balloon payments, like five hundred thousand dollars, like a month type shit. You know, something, something crazy. That's a war good, but yeah, he, his spirit say he want to fight, bro. What's he does? You know, good. You, you know, want that Canelo sweepstakes? Yeah, you know, but but he's gonna ha- he's he's gonna have to wait until that insurance policy runs out. You know, else he's got to pay back the money. Once, how, once, how, once, once, how once, much? Once, how long does it last, though? It, it all depends what they do. Like, I mean. It, 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 <laughs> now nah, most three times, years, five most years. times, no. Nah, most times, when you have a Lloyd's of London policy, that shit doesn't run out for a long time. You're basically done. It's it's gonna run, by the time it runs out, he's not even he's not even he's been so far removed from boxing. It's like he's not gonna come back. I mean, it, uh, let's say, let's say, I mean, it depends on how many years, and let's say, you know, and how much he paid on that policy before he collected on. I mean, it, I mean, it could be just it could be a couple years, but he gets like a. A large ass amount. Everything. Well, he's in a lawsuit. He's in a lawsuit with them right now. So, no. he's dancing on lawsuits. Yeah, right. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, for a guy, for a guy calling himself the son of God, he could, he sure gets sued a lot. Jesus. Bro, <laughs> no, he doesn't like... sue. Him. No, he doesn't sue. Him. He's he sued Lloyd to London. Yeah. Still, what there's do a lot with this guy. You know, it's a, but I mean, I mean, I guess that's war for you. But uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, he was harping a little bit too much on some shit in the fight and stuff, calling the fight as it was, you know. And like I said, Pedraza looked excellent. And Les Pierre was, like I said, he, I, I give him props because he just do left over. Like he was beating the fuck up at the end of that, the end of that fight. Like he went down in the final round too. I thought they were gonna stop that shit because he he looked dumb. There were several times where I felt like if they would have stopped it, I'd have been like, yeah. That's the thing, you know, Pedraza, I feel like he could have forced them down De La Hoya, Calzaki stoppages if he really just ran them up. Because sometimes I think he shot his wide with those punches. I did too, but I mean, let's be, uh, yeah, because what the thing about let's be is like he gets hurt, but he does recover pretty quickly. And I think that's what happened. That's what I actually got. He was him. Like he was hurt for like stanzas, like, for, yeah. like 40 and 50 seconds at a time. Like, that's a long time to be hurt in a boxing match in, in a round. And I get a significant time to recover. <laughs> you know, he, he hung through. It was, uh, he showed hard. Uh, I feel like he's back to the drawing board for him, though. 
Yeah, no. Like, like I said, and this is why I think, like, if, I, if the fight originally happened and it happened at that uh, happened at 140, you know, instead of the catch weight, but this, I, 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 it could have been a better performance from him. But like I said, I won't take nothing. Let's be. I mean, it was still an entertaining fight. I mean, he still legitimately knocked down Pedraza. You know, and he and he still he still showed heart. So I mean, that's that's oh, that's and then that's all we can ask. Yeah, he made it a he made it a entertaining fight. He hung in tough. Um, Pedraza, I guess we want to see what else he does. What else he does? He looks good. We just want to just keep on moving forward. I know he won another title shot, so we'll see what happens with them. Yeah, no, except 140. You know. Yeah. Yeah, like and I know that I know there's a little controversy because ESPN put up their little thing about the top 140 fighters, and now, now why I don't Bullshit. agree. Now, now why I don't agree with the number one, I do think it's a good snapshot of 140 as it is in terms of you know the type of talent that it has. And that's the only thing I took away from it. That's the only legitimate thing I took away from it. Like you know they had good fighters there. You see. You know, yes. Stacked, it's a stacked division, but uh, yeah. no, 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 list, no list with Taylor at number one is credible, in like it with yeah. Taylor not at number one. So, fuck ESPN and their damn list. So, should, be, <laughs> should be Taylor, then Ramirez. Shit, is Ram- can you even can, can you even say Ramirez is better than Progre? Like, yeah, you can, you can, you can stop Hooker, bro. Yeah. Stop the nigga, this dude is damn bitching about fighting just because he got a pop belly and he got to do it at three more pounds. <laughs> if you do that out of shape, it, fight the dude at 147, beat his ass the fuck down and, and be done with it. Right. Like, you, know, you think should Ramirez would probably take that fight again if he could at 147 beat his ass all over again? Oh yeah, he would. Of course he would. So it's like, you know... You know, so that that's why. Um, and I remember Ramirez got the win over uh, Zapata too. True, yeah, a gift. Nah, it wasn't no gift. That was a close fight. I thought it wasn't. Ramirez, a, it yeah. wasn't a gift, but it was pretty, pretty close to a comeback. Yeah, it was. It could have gone either way. I ain't gonna call that no gift. <laughs> either way, Ramirez did look like he won the damn fight. That's for damn sure. Ramirez got good. Ramirez, you know, was. Oh, that, that's that's why you thought Hooker would beat him. I did. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not a fan of Ramirez. <laughs> of course not. You don't have to. Be. Yeah, Ramirez is too hot and cold for my life. Yeah. So, looks great, and then the Zabeda fight is just like, oh, I see that kind of fight. Ah. I think Zabeda was just actually good, and you know that's why the fight was close like that. I don't think he he sucked. He was in there with a guy who was fucking capable. Right, and, and then it, it happened. Yeah, yeah. Nah, Ramirez at his best is better than Zabeda at his best. So it's I, yeah, but you know if if a guy like Zabeda fights at his best, sometimes sometimes if the underdog fights at his absolute best, fight above his head. Even the favorite who might just be fighting good has a problem. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean, that's, it happens, niggas boxing. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that's a good segue. I mean, you made it up with the hooker fight, shit. Yeah, I know the hooker well, fight. You made it up with the hooker fight. I'll, I'll say that. You know, like Ramirez. I, mean, I, I can see Progray could be number three. Yeah, I mean, Pro, I mean, Pro, it looks like Pro only has a ta- has a competitive Taylor loss, you know. But it, yeah. you know, you, I guess it's you, you, it was basically we're just waiting to see who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna fight next. Yeah. Who's next? Yeah, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, because you know, ruining a potential, you know, probably one of the best fights that you can make this year, you know, because of some weight shit. So it's un- it's unfortunate. But uh, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, but it's stop time- eating fucking ice cream. That's what you're gonna stop doing. Like, that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I see the. I think the the picture of program was like that's why he don't want to. Yeah, the hooker. Yeah, and, and hook. I mean, hooker's a tall cat too. So I, I, like I said, I remember like because he was killing himself to make 140. I mean, I had to cut his hair. He was almost five pounds at the weight and shit like that. Like all I'm saying, if you know all that, just make the just fight him then. Like, come on, like, and that's the thing. It's like, 
it's not like this, this ain't Chris Bird fighting Jamil McCline giving up 65 pounds. <laughs> like, y'all, you, you gonna be giving up damn five or six pounds? Well, who gives a fuck? You say you better, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, well, like I say, because you never know. I mean, first of all, I don't think Coco even puts in that much. I mean, this, this ain't this ain't Mikey Garcia versus Spence. This ain't Brooke Golovkin. Like, this is Hooker Pro Gray, bro. These guys are roughly around the same size. One guy might be naturally a little bigger. Yeah, but I, I think, I think, I, well, I mean, either way, I think they're trying to get a low. I mean, either Hooker is like, was, you know, was like, no, I want to do 147. And and, that, and that's where, I leave. if Hooker didn't fight at 147 in his last fight, I would have really got, I would, I would have been, okay, this is probably Hooker's doing. But I mean, the hooker at least did fight at one forty. Yeah, but then once they, I think they settled on one forty five, and then I think either Pro Gray didn't want to do it, or I think Hooker didn't want to do one forty five. Hooker didn't want to do it. No, Hooker didn't. Yeah, hooker didn't want to do one forty five. And then so I'm like, you 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 leaning too much. Like first it was okay, catch weight, which it, I I don't agree with catch weights like that, but it is what it is. And then you want to lean it back to one forty seven after you said one forty five. Like, come on. And then the fight, in the since the fight was so was planned for so far away, it shouldn't have been a, a big deal like that. But then at the end of the day, like once Pro Gray said he's not gonna take the 145, then just drop it. Don't keep hounding dude or, or, or talking shit on the pictures when he posts up. He training, like he training, right? Why your ass should be training, right? <laughs> like at that point, I you know if you're not gonna take the fight, you know don't talk shit no more about it, you know because you could you the one could. Could, could, could uh, aim aim punches at that gut you, you cracking jokes about. <laughs> you could do that. You could be the damn the foot in his ass and make him change his career for the better. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's boxing as the world turns as drama. You gotta love it. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all not big enough like Floyd and, and Pacquiao to be shit talking each other for five years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I think, I mean, I think eventually down the line, you'll you'll see both of them in the ring, and, and you know, one person will really beat the shit out of the other. And I'm probably looking at Pro Gray uh, being shit out of Hooker. <laughs> yeah. You know, for that. But in terms of, but with regards to Zapata, as was mentioned before, I mean, he was the main event for yesterday's uh, yesterday's top ranked card. Now, originally, Zapata was supposed to face Ivan Brancheck. Which would have probably been the best fight out of the whole. Yeah, that was gonna be a really fucking fight. Yeah, that would have been. That would have been. Uh, that that was. A, that had a fight of the year written on it, and that's. And I. I think that's probably the only fight I've said that. Uh, for top ranks cards so far, the one they they've uh, listed out. You know, but unfortunately, Berencheck suffered like a rib injury. That was the best fight on paper, really. It was, because you had two legit 140 contenders, like. It's just a credit to the matchmaking where we've gotten so many other good fights and you know they haven't been you know they look good on paper but not to this level where you're guaranteed like because the maloney franco looked good on paper too it did yeah it did and it turned it and even the career fight so yeah the great yeah, the great fight like pretty much had had so much had, had so much noise over it like i was surprised how much noise that career fight had and then Shit actually happened that people feared that would happen. <laughs> you know, so you know it, it was nuts. And like I said, Zapata Berenice had that type of hype, and it was unfortunate. Um, and hopefully, Berenice will actually heal up soon enough to, you know, to run that back with Zapata. Um, so Zapata got a replacement, Kendo Castaneda, uh, and uh, we'll get to that fight. But I think the co feature one was the more interesting one. Um, Andy Vences versus Luis Alberto Lopez. Now, Vences is someone that I've heard of because Luki, shout out to Luki Boxing, used to tell me all the time about Duke, all the time about Andy this, Andy that, Andy this, you know, and, um, and so I, I, I pay attention to whenever he fight. Um, I know like, he went on this video for like 22 fights and then he lost to the aforementioned um, um, Albert Bell, who, you know, in and for the first thing is, I actually forgot about that fight because <laughs> it wasn't the most exciting fight. But um, uh, it was one of those fights that everyone thought that Vences um, won, but uh, he didn't get the nod. So I think he was just trying to rebuild his career 
against Luis Alberto Lopez, and Lopez I didn't know too much about, um, other than he, I heard that he was kind of slick. You know, Vences is usually not. <laughs> Vences, for the most part, um, is not a good TV fighter. I will admit that he has his moments, but he's not a good TV fighter. This fight was something else. This fight was. It was it was actually pretty bloody and brutal, surprisingly. Um, yeah, it was like doing some hands. It was it was a good fucking fight. Yeah, you know, yeah, headbutts, cuts, some there some things. Yeah, I know. And knockdowns. Yeah, like Vences, uh, like Vences definitely uh, surprised me because basically he gave up his like, he had like he had he had a height and a reach advantage and he gave it up quick. And on top of that, he was not, and he was kind of slow to actually, like he punched, but he was slow to actually get his fist back to the position. And yeah, because he had his, his, he had some bad boxing stance, and yeah. he's, yeah, he's down, yeah. like he's not at a good angle. Like, yeah, he fights hunched over. And I'm like, why? Like, you don't want to give yourself scoliosis, bro. Like, you gotta straighten up and fight, you know? And, 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 and for some reason, Lopez was landing all these weird punches on him. Especially an uppercut. The uppercut too is Yeah, he he's very awkward, Lopez. Very awkward. Yeah. I don't know, he looked more slick than awkward. Like he had awkward moments because I felt like he would do a lot of slick shit and counter and, 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 and move about, but then offensively he would just lunge and just throw some Billy Dib ass punches, but he would make it look smoother. Like he wasn't falling in the clinches and the punches were clean and hard, so I was like, well, that's effective. Right, and I think Invincis, I think, had a hard time because I think he was trying to brace himself, like he could, because he, he was too slow to roll the punches. So I think, so I guess he tried, he tried to like either. Well, yeah, break. when when that happens, you just put your fucking guard up, which he refused to do. Right, and that's what happened in one of the rounds where I think he ate an uppercut, and that had him all fucked up in the game. And then Lopez pretty much beat his ass the whole round, like. So I felt like Lopez beat his ass most of the fight. Like I only think Vincent won like maybe three rounds. Yeah, that 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 jab was fucking. I know. I, I don't remember the last time I seen a jab land like that so many fucking times. He just, just the Mangia fight with uh, so, uh, Spike Sullivan was the last yeah. time I seen a, a jab yeah. really land a, a bunch of times. Really, like every jab, like he, he looked like like it got to the point where this nigga was looking like. Like in the in the fighting games, like in Street Fighter, where you just hit one button and the fucking just and you just keep jabbing in the fucking game and shit like that. That's shit, what that's what it looks like. Yeah, he was he was making them look bad. Like I, like Lopez beat it. I don't know what fight Andre Ward was watching. Now here's one thing. Like after that round, after Lopez like knocked Andy Vences around, like I thought I was like, man, like he let Vences get out of that round. He escaped because I thought a stoppage was coming. You know, yeah. but but after that, I didn't think Lopez was as sharp after that round. And that's what Vince's kind of woke up after that. Vince started fighting back more. Like if you notice, the first three, I would say the first four rounds, Vince's was just getting pasted, but the pace was lit brisk like that. But he was taking a, a, a low key ass whooping boxing lesson. Hell yeah, he, fifth, was. he started waking up. And then I think once he got hurt real bad, like you said, that's when it's like he's like, okay, shit, it's, it's a fight. And it's like, yeah, it's in the middle of it, but yeah, go ahead. And then Lopez kind of got a little unfrazzled because Vince is, you know, was coming back at him now. Yeah, he was. You know, and then I also felt like he outpunched him and outboxed him. And, you know, he just had a little tougher go of it at the end, at the second half. You know, and then, uh, but also too, I also felt that I, I also felt that um, Lopez was giving the fight away at times because although like although he was like he was slick, like he was rolling with the punches and dodging them, doing all types of you know the, the razzle-tazzle like Teddy Alice would say. You know, I didn't think he was I didn't think he was firing back offensively enough. And I thought he, uh, and Ventus, although he was you know although he was hurt, he was still throwing his hands. He was still moving his hands more. You know, I thought okay, he just. I thought Vincent just just eked it out. He he basically Lopez gave away the fight. So I was kind of surprised that they actually gave the fight to him to Lopez. Like I was really surprised. Like I was wow, just... I saw a clear ass whooping, man. <laughs> like honestly, the only way, like even a draw would have looked bad, but I could have seen a draw. If you know, because the second half was closer, but 
Right. If Vincent would have won that, I would have said robbery. Like, he looked too bad in that fight, man. Like, he was getting hit clean so many times. Yeah, but yeah, I think the biggest thing with Vences was I don't think he had, I, I think he just had no fight identity. Like, he was struggling to fight because I think because Lopez was so awkward and he didn't really have a style to 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 deal with that. So he was kind of... Because he, he wasn't trying. Like, like, he would throw a jab and drop his hand. <laughs> he would follow dude around. He wasn't moving his head. He didn't have a guard. He's right. like, I don't know what the fuck he was doing. It was like he was a novice, like less than a novice, because at least a novice would cover up better. Yeah, I think he was. I think maybe he thought that he he could probably offensively like walk through that shit. But when he couldn't time that shit, he just got pasted. <laughs> you know, yeah, over and over, over again, over and over again, and almost iced in the middle of the fight. So it's just like. Uh, I mean, I mean, I was happy for Lopez, and I was like, "Damn, like another upset." I mean, top break. I mean, top break is you know, Vets was one of their prospects too. You know, they tra- they were trying to move him, but now I don't even know what to do with Vets yeah, right now. Moving back to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, he definitely got some work needs to be done, bro. Like, but the funny thing is too is like they didn't even like the funny thing with Vences. Like, did it? They interviewed him instead of Lopez afterwards. I was like, "Why are you interviewing the loser?" Like, and hell no, that wasn't no goddamn draw. Like, that was a clear fucking Lopez. You, you see what I'm saying? Okay, okay, you see what I'm saying? Like, like I'm, I'm hearing this and I'm like, "Where are you getting a draw from?" Like, oh, look, hey, look, I, I, I only said draw because this nigga talking about he didn't even think Lopez won. So I was like, uh, yeah, got, maybe. I, but even I a draw would be bad to me. No, I think I had that shit like 97, 93 Lopez. Like, That's what I'm saying. Like when they, when they were saying 96, maybe 96, 94, nine, maybe, maybe I was 96, like, 94. Damn, I was like, wasn't even no, that close. No. 96, I, 94, I, I could see that. But I think 97 for 93 is the correct score. Yeah, no, like, it wasn't no goddamn draw. I mean, I'm not I'm not screaming Robert, but I actually thought it was a close win for Vince. I thought Vince pulled up because I thought Lopez was giving game away in the fight in the second half. I didn't say it was a robbery. I just thought that I thought Lopez was giving the fight away. You know, because he was because he was a little bit more with the razzle tazzle than you know, even like, then, like giving the fight away, like nah, he had enough rounds stored. In yeah, the he had enough rounds. Like to me, honestly, Vince didn't start winning rounds until like I think what the sixth round, like the seventh, or the fifth. Round. Like he, he was definitely like four rounds down in that fight. But like I said, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not arguing with the result, man. It was just like I mean, you know, Lopez, oh Lopez, he won, and like I said, he he, he definitely won, and he, and he looked good. But like I said, I mean, Vences didn't look good, and that was the that, that was the thing I took away from the fight. Vences, um, whatever it is, he, I don't know if he needs a new trainer. I, th- I think he's trained by his father, if I'm not mistaken. You know, and you know, father son sometimes, you know, those father son pairings at, over time you got probably got to switch it up. You know, he probably ran his course. Nah, nah. Most of the time know. they suck. Most of the time those those those. Nah, you can't say they suck. Nah, there's too many examples of it working out good. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, okay, maybe I'm being a little harsh, but they could stand to get a little. The, the son usually could stand to get better than the father. Usually, the they outgrow their father from a from a skill standpoint. So, but they just keep him around for a. Emotional, but that's the thing. This guy, we can't even we don't know yet because he has basic skills that could be improved without even moving. Like, like, does he need a new trainer to keep his fucking hand up? Mm. To throw a fucking jab? Yeah. Does he need like <laughs> personal motivators? Like, like, I'm one of these guys where it's like. I don't want to just blame the coaching on simple shit like that. We don't know what's going on in the gym, you know. There's a lot of shit he could have executed better in that fight. But he just, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think there was any solid plans in that fight. I don't think he had a game plan. And I feel like whenever in doubt, you punch it out, meaning, you know, you just keep, you keep at it with the jab, you know. Be on some Devin Alexander shit. Fight harder. Yeah, yeah well, well, with with, with, with Vences' defense, he's gonna lose every punching battle out there. Yeah, he has at least he'll be punching because the first four rounds he was just following the dude getting clocked. In the second half of the fight, he followed the dude around and punched and actually kind of did something. 
Right. <laughs> you know, while, while still getting clogged. Yeah, and 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 Vince is and lucky for him. He I mean, he plays as a super feather, so I mean that type of style he could probably get away with that with certain opponents. You know, but like I said, you know, if you want to put them in the it, like if you're trying to build them to fight like with a first shot or something like that, you know, you yeah, he, he gets clobbered. You know, you can't you can't do that. And I know before um, Vences was talking about Jamel, Jamel Herring was uh, was ducking him more people. Uh, if Jamel, yeah, if Jamel, if he, if you fought Jamel Herring, Jamel Herring would have embarrassed him. Like, I mean, and Jamel I Herring really got embarrassed last night. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying Jamel like, Herring would have probably ducked him out or, um, or or skunked him. Pretty much, yeah. You know, so it's just like I mean, hell, I mean, even fucking uh, even Shakur Stevenson, like an ad or something like that. I mean, I mean probably I mean, yeah, even Oscar Valdez too probably would have would have had a field day with, with Vences. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I, Vences. Yeah, I don't know what it is or you know, either, but clearly something needs to be tweaked in this camp. He yeah. said. So, so something something went horribly wrong, and that it needs to be corrected before someone brutally knocks him out. He hits, he gets hit clean too much. The right. motherfucker doesn't put his hands up half the time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not put your hands up? Like blah. <laughs> it's a simple concept sometimes, but like I said, sometimes uh, you know. Sure. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna say you know, move your head because if you don't put your hands up, moving your head is definitely out of the question. Too much to ask for. <laughs> <laughs> for real. I mean, sometimes it's, it's a, sometimes it's, it's the simple things in boxing to do that be the most difficult. Yeah, like, but, like, like sometimes those lead, Sometimes the simple things lead to the biggest improvements too. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> like, oh my God! Like, the, the fight would be completely different if he would have had his hands up in the first half. Yeah, it's it's funny how boxing it, it just it's just it can be the slightest things that can either that either get you a win or puts a zero on your record. It, 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 it's hilarious. I it's a, don't, it's just like, like like boxing reflect life. Like sometimes a, a, a simple. Yes or no could change your life. Sometimes walking down this street instead of this street could change your life. Like that's what boxing, you know, having your hand up or having your hand down could change the whole course of your fight. And career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely your career. 